Hello Algebra fans! Today we are looking at solving quadratic equations by factoring. In chapter 9 we're actually going to learn four different ways to solve quadratic equations. Um, I wanted to include this one because I think it's important. Uh, we can factor polynomials we know, so we can factor quadratic equations, and um, that is really what today is all about. So our essential question is how do you solve a quadratic equation by factoring? When you are asked to solve the equation you are asked to find the solution for x. All right, another way of saying that is we want to find the zeros. All right, we want to find the zeros. Um, so what are zeros? Zeros are where the quadratic equation crosses the x-axis. All right, crosses the x-axis. Now, there are many ways of doing this. We're only going to talk about four of them in this unit, um, one of them being factoring. I know it says method two on here, but you know, we could rearrange it in many different orders. So we know that if we have a zero and we times it by anything, right? Zero times anything is going to equal zero. Three times zero is zero. Zero times four is zero. Um, if we have zero times one, it's zero. If we have zero times x, it's zero. If we have z times zero, it's zero, okay? Zero times anything is zero. That is the basis of today's lesson. Zero times anything is zero. So let's say we have taken a quadratic equation and we have already factored it. So we have factored it into x minus three and into x minus nine. If just one of these parentheses is equal to zero, so if we have x minus 3 is equal to 0, then this whole thing is 0, right? As long as we have one of these two parentheses is 0, then the whole thing is 0. So I'm going to take my x minus 3, and I'm going to say, well, gee, what if x minus 3 equals 0? What would x be to make this equal 0? Well, I have to get x by itself. Hey, that's going all the way back to chapter 1. Whoa, crazy talk. To get x by itself, I have to add 3 on both sides. So now we have an x, our minus 3 plus 3 cancels out, and then we have 0 plus 3 gets us 3. So x must be 3 for this parentheses to equal 0. Well, let's take a look at what if we had x minus 9 equals 0. What if x minus 9 equals 0? Again, we have to get x by itself. So we have to add 9 on both sides. So then x would equal 9. Now let's check and make sure that's right. I mean, these are pretty simple, but we always want to do a check. Let's check for both of them, okay? So we are going to plug in 3 everywhere we see an x up here. So we have x minus 3, parentheses, x minus 9 is equal to 0. Let's plug in 3 everywhere we see an x. So we have 3 minus 3 in our first parentheses and then 3 minus 9 in our next. Well, 3 minus 3 is indeed 0. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. 0 times negative 6 is 0. Does 0 equal 0? Yes. Remember, in a check, nothing moves. Nothing moves. So let's check for 9. Make sure 9 actually works. So we have x minus 3 in our first parentheses, x minus 9 in our second. I plug in 9 everywhere I see an x, so 9 minus 3. And then 9 minus 9. Well, 9 minus 3 is a positive 6. 9 minus 9 is 0. 6 times 0 is 0. So yes, that works as well. Oops, I was off the page. So our final answer are zeros. All right, our final answer for our zeros is when x equals 3. That's our first one. And when x equals 9. Another way of saying that is on our graph here, if I sketch a little graph, the parabola is going to cross where x is equal to 3 and where x is equal to 9. So it's going to look something like that. So that is where x equals 3, and where that is x equals 9. So another way of thinking about it, okay? Let's try another problem together. So I'm going to turn the page. All right, for our top question here, we have 2x 
times parentheses x minus 4. This one has already been factored for us, which is super nice. Um, so we want the possibility of what if 2x is equal to 0? What if 2x is equal to 0? Well, how do we get x by itself? We have to divide both sides by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. All right, our next possibility would be, well, what if it's x minus 4 that equals 0? Let's get x by itself. We need to add 4 on both sides. So we have x equals 4. Let's do a check. So we need to plug in 0 everywhere we see x. 2x x minus 4 equals 0. So we would have 2 times 0 and 0 minus 4. Well, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Hey, 0 times negative 4 is 0. So yes, 0 is one possibility for our answer. Let's check 4 next. 2x x minus 4 equals 0. So we have 2 times 4, and then 4 minus 4. Well, 2 times 4 is 8. 4 minus 4 is 0. 8 times 0 is 0. Does 0 equal 0? Yes. So x minus 4 is also a possibility. I want you to try the next one on your own. Okay, it's a little bit more complicated, but try it and check it on your own. All right, so you should have set our 2x plus 7 equal to 0. We subtract 7 on both sides, then we have to divide by 2. So one possibility is x equals negative 7 halves. The other one, we had to add 7 to both sides, divide by 2, so x equals positive 7 halves. Now when you plug those in to check, for x equals negative 7 halves, you would have gotten 0 times negative 14 is equal to 0. Yes, 0 equals 0. So x equals negative 7 halves is one possibility. We plug in 7 halves on the other side, and you should have gotten positive 14 times 0, which is 0. So x equals negative 7 halves, x equals positive 7 halves are both answers. Let's try another one. You should be trying this one on your own, x minus 1 squared. And I've given you a hint. I've given you a hint. Try it on your own. So we get x minus 1 is equal to 0, and x minus, oops, minus 1 is equal to 0. I have to add 1 on both sides. So we get x equals 1, add 1 on both sides, and we get x equals 1. Hey, wait a second. This is the same answer. It's the same answer. That means we do not have two zero possibilities. We just have 1, x equals 1. So when I do my check, I get x minus 1 squared equals 0. So we have 1 minus 1 squared is equal to 0. So that's 0 squared, well, 0 times itself, which is what squaring is, is still 0. So yes, it works. All right, with our next one, we actually have a trinomial down here. So you will need to find three zeros and check them. Take a minute to pause, see what you get. All right, you should have solved this one which means you would have gotten x plus 1 equals 0. Subtract 1 on both sides. Your first possibility is x equals negative 1. Then we've got x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 on both sides. x equals 3 is your next possibility. And finally, we have x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 on both sides. We get x equals 2. When you plug those in to check, all three of them work out. So you have three possible zeros. x equals negative 1, x equals 3, and x equals 2. Those are the places where the graph would cross the x-axis. All right, let's try a couple more. Ooh, as my pencils go flying everywhere. Sorry, guys. So for this next one, it is not factored. All right, it is not factored. Hey, it's like we spent an entire unit learning how to factor. Wow, crazy talk, I know. We're actually using those things. Weird. So first thing we need to do is to factor. All right, first thing we need to do is to factor. So we are looking at the factors of 10. Well, 
for 10, we could have 10 and 1, or we could have 2 and 5. Which of those are going to add to 7? Which of those are going to add to 7? It should be our 2 and 5, right? So I'm going to put my two parentheses here. I leave my 0. I know x is going to go first, and I need to do x plus 2 and x plus 7. And now I can take a look and say, well, what if x plus 2 is the one that equals 0? What if? I need to subtract 2 on both sides, and we get x equals negative 2. Okay, but what if it's really the x plus 7 that's the 0? What would we have then? Well, we subtract 7 on both sides. There we go. And we get x equals negative 7. Ooh, it shouldn't be 7. <gasps> it should be 5. Oh, Miss Frisch, that was awful. My number is totally wrong. So it should be x plus 5, x plus 5. And 2 and 5 make 7. Ooh, dyslexia. Sorry, guys. We plug it in and do a check. All right, so we check negative 2. So we've got x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. Remember, always plug it into the original. Plug it into the original. After all, I might have done something wrong in my factoring. I don't think I did, but I am human, as we have seen. I plug in negative 2 everywhere I see an x. So negative 2 squared plus 7 times negative 2 plus 10 is equal to 0. Well, negative 2 squared is positive 4. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Plus 10 is equal to 0. Negative 4, I'm sorry, positive 4 minus 14 is negative 10. Plus 10 is 0. Does 0 equal 0? Yes. So we have x squared plus 7x plus 10 is equal to 0. I'm plugging in negative 5 now. Negative 5. So we have negative 5 squared plus 7 times negative 5 plus 10 is equal to 0. Negative 5 squared is a positive 25. 7 times negative 5 is negative 35 plus 10. Well, 25 minus 35 is negative 10 plus 10 is indeed 0. So 0 equals 0. So our two zeros are x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 5. We're going to do one more example together, and I'm going to have you try some on your own. I'm going to have you try some on your own. So for our next one here, we need to subtract x squared plus 2x. We need to subtract 8 on both sides, so we get minus 8 equals 0. That way we have our nice 0, right? That way we have our nice 0. And now we need to... So we solve, and now we need to factor. So we need to ask ourselves, what multiplies to make negative 8? Well, that could be a 1 and negative 8, or a negative 1 and positive 8. It could be a 2 and negative 4, or a 4 and negative 2. Those are our possibilities. Which of these is going to add to positive 2? which is going to add to positive 2. This one right here. So I give myself my two parentheses. We have an x plus 4 and an x minus 2. Then I say, well, what if it's the x plus 4 that equals 0? I need to subtract 4 on both sides, and I get an x equals negative 4. Okay, but what if it's really the x minus 2 that equals 0? Well, then I have to add 2 on both sides and we get an x equals 2. If I check both of those, I find that they are indeed correct. So our two zeros are our x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. I promise my notes online have the checks. I promise. All right, I want you to try the next ones on your own. All right, try the next ones on your own. So that's going to be these two. I will pause the video here and try the next ones on my own. All right, for our top one, you need to subtract 12x from both sides. So you get x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals 0. What multiplies make 36 and adds to get negative 12? Well, x minus 6 and x minus 6. When we set that equal to 0, we get x equals 6 
after we solve it, hey, wait a second, that's the same answer. So we do not have two zeros for this, we only have one, x equals six. And when you do your check, it works. Um, because you get 72 equals 72. Remember, you always plug it into the original. Use the original in your check. All right? Let's look at the bottom one. Let's look at the bottom one. So we have to, um, and you could have done this a couple different ways. For me personally, I like to subtract the 3x and then add the 3 so I get everything on this side. That way my x squared stays nice and positive. So we've got x squared minus 3x plus 3. How do I factor it? Well, where are the multiples of 3? 3 and 1. That's it. Those are the only possibilities. How can I get those to add to make negative 3? I can't. It's not factorable. <laughs> it's not factorable. All right, I want you to take a second and try the next two. Try the next two. They look like this. So for the next two, you should have gotten, um, when you factored it, x and x plus 4. So if we set x equals 0, what could it be? Well, just 0, right? And if x plus 4 is the 0, then we subtract 4 on both sides to get x by itself, so x equals negative 4. So our two possibilities are x equals 0 and x equals 4. Those are our zeros. For the one below it, we have x squared plus 6x equals negative 6. I have to add 6 on both sides. Then I can factor it. Multiples of 6 are 2 and 3 or 1 and 7. I'm sorry, 1 and 6. 1 and 6 add to make 7. So we have x plus 1 times x plus 6. Set them equal, solve for x. So I get x equals negative 1. And I get x equals negative 6. When I do a check, they both work. Yay. And again, make sure you plug it into the original. Plug it into the original. Not your factor form or the one that you solved. The original. Plug it into the original. All right, the next two I want you to try. are these two. Next two I want you to try are these two. And this one will have three zeros. All right, it will have three zeros. Pause the video, try these two. All right, you should have gotten with your first one or the top one, however you like to think about it. 5p is equal to 0. Divide by 5 on both sides, so p is equal to 0. 2p minus 3 equals 0. We add 3 on both sides, so 2p equals 3. Then we have to divide by 2. So we get a p equals 3 halves, or 1.5 if you really hate my fraction. And then the last one is p plus 7 equals 0. I subtract 7 on both sides, so we get p equals negative 7. When I do a check for all of these, we get 0 is equal to 0, so they all three work, which is fantastic. Our last one, we have a 15 minus 5c is equal to 0. I subtract 15 on both sides. Then I need to divide by negative 5. So we get c equals 3 for our first possibility. When I plug that back in, it works. For our next one, we have 5c plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 on both sides. Then I need to divide by 5 to get c by itself. So c equals negative 1. When I plug that back in, it also works. Our last one is a negative c plus 6. Now you have a couple different ways of doing this. You could add c to both sides like I did, or you could subtract 6 on both sides to get negative c equals negative 6. And then we have to divide by negative 1. So we would get c equals positive 6. It doesn't matter which way you do it, you still get a c equals 6, right? This way has more steps. It still works, though. We plug 6 in for our check, we get a 0 equals 0. Email me if you have questions. There's a reason we spent time factoring, though. Email me if you have questions.